because this agenda, this plan, is likely to commence and start in 2025. And it's going to start off slow, but it's going to come to a boiling point, and you best believe you want to be prepared when that does happen. But with that being said, let's get into exactly what Windy Web says here so we can understand, I guess, the full issue that's at hand here. And then we'll talk about solutions towards the end of this video. Now is them literally tokenizing all their existing rackets to move it into this new, like, fourth industrial right. revolution paradigm. That's literally what is happening across the board, and people just, like, don't recognize it. And they're cloaking it and all the stuff, like, uh, specifically with, like, SDGs and Agenda 2030. It's like, this will make a better world. And then you actually, like, look at it, and it's like... This is insane. Why are all bankers in charge of this? I hate it so much. But I mean, you go back into like the UN, like the UN Secretary General Kofi Annan, like at the end of the 90s was like, yeah, so you know how we used to be at least viewed as like a, the public sector, you know, uh, all the public sectors of the world all coming together to like democratically vote on stuff. Well, now we've basically been taken over by corporations and now the business of the businesses of the world is our business. You know, I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he said. In order to create this space where they want to like push people into this new system there's going to be chaos and there's going to be instability and so the comfort and convenience that keeps people asleep will be disrupted what people do in that point in time is the most critical about this whole thing about how it plays out seriously like that is the most important window and again that is why it's so important to be local because okay there's a big cyber tech on the financial system the internet goes down for a couple of days what are people going to do they're going to go out in the street and look for answers figure out what's going on this is why it's important to know what's going on and couple that with having, you know, connections in your local community so you can direct people about what needs to be done and what's happening at that point in time. It's like very important. Well, also the internet when it turns back on isn't going to be like the internet now at all. No. They're going to put AI in charge of like literally all content. Your ID is going to be tied to not just everything you post online, uh, but everything you read and consume every site you visit. And they plan to pass all of that through AI to determine if you're a threat to the system or not. This is all like predictive policing. All of this stuff is built into this system. Specifically, this is all like predictive policing. All of this stuff is built into this system. system or not. This is all like predictive policing. All of this stuff is built into this system. Specifically in the U.S. All the T.I.s you already know about the predictive policing. A.K.A. Minority Report, A.K.A. Gang Stalking, A.K.A. Track and Trace, A.K.A. Pokemon, Truman Show, Get On Your Damn Nerves, A.K.A. I'm going to put my foot up a boss ass, A.K.A. The hell with the police, the predictive policing. The Biden administration already has the policy framework developed. They've had it since, I mean, they first came in to power in 2021. Eric Schmidt, right, who basically runs, like, AI national security policy for the U.S. Uh, too, and is, like, funding all this science and technology policy stuff. Basically, key officials in that of the Biden administration are being paid. Their salaries are being paid by Eric Schmidt. It's, like, super illegal. And Politico reported on it, and, like, nothing was done. They were like, well, I see you found out, and that is that. That guy has an insane amount of power. He was just on a podcast uh, talking about what needs to be done about misinformation. And he was saying, uh, yeah, uh, we need to uh, get everyone's ID tied to social media. And then when people post misinformation, report them to law enforcement. And I know a lot of you might think this is not possible to happen in a place like America or Canada or Europe. Oh, but wait a second. This is actually happening right now in the United Kingdom. You might have noticed there's been a lot of political unrest lately all over England. There's been, you know, mosques being burned down, churches being built, burned down. There's a lot of, you know, political unrest there. And some people have taken to social media to talk about this and what's happening to those individuals. They quite literally are getting visits from the police in the UK and they are getting arrested and thrown in jail and they are taking the jail cell of somebody who was like a convicted you know horrible person like a murderer or something and they're going in jail for talking about events that are happening right now that they disagree with that they frankly think should not be happening this is a reality right now in developed western nations so if you do not think this is possible to happen in the united states of america in canada no matter where you are 
didn't, didn't Jesus warn you? You shall be uh, persecuted for my name's sake. They're gonna, they're gonna deliver you up, lock your ass up, persecute you for my name's sake. I don't, I don't know what Bible y'all reading. I'm gonna sound like Obama, folks. Folks haven't been reading their Bibles. Are in the world, it very much is possible to be happening, and this is something you definitely need to be looking out for. Because if you're not prepared for that, if you're not getting ready for that, because that's the agenda that. these individuals do have, you most definitely are going to be one of those sheeple that are just blindly going to be moving along into their agenda, and they're just going to continuously coerce you around until one day you wake up and you and your family do not have any ability to make any decisions on your own without first having to ask some <laughs> elitist <laughs> and, and i don't think any of you want that i mean frankly the government's supposed to serve us right that's what it's supposed to be like but that's definitely not happening right now well crazily enough actually this is also already starting to happen in the united states of america i mean check this news article out utah man killed by fbi agents after he allegedly made threats against biden let's listen a little bit more to what whitney webb says here posted stuff about how he hated joe biden uh and how joe biden shouldn't come in his neighborhood and all this stuff uh on facebook and then the fbi shot him in front of his house and he was like an old disabled guy eric schmidt's idea is a very bad idea it's a very bad idea eric schmidt is also a dangerous fascist who controls a large amount of u.s government policy right now and how the government and the intelligence agencies and the military plan to use AI. And so here's probably the most shocking thing of all, right? This is just talking more and diving deeper into the whole AI thing that Whitney Webb was talking about. AI-generated content is on the rise. I have a friend who is creating AI-generated music, uploading it to YouTube, and his videos are getting tens of thousands of views. And he's most definitely not the only person that's currently doing this. We actually have a lot of people using AI to generate news articles, using it to generate music, using it to generate whole YouTube videos with a script you just provide for it, writing assignments, school projects, you name it. AI is starting to be, take over completely online generated content and many experts are agreeing that ai generated content is going to be 90 percent of all internet content by 2025 so what does this have to do with what would you have is talking about here well here's the thing this is the future that these elitists want because they're the ones who are developing these ai programs and what we've already seen is these ai programs are already extremely biased they push certain political narratives they are not perfect they most definitely do not represent our best interests as people because it's impossible to do that if it's being developed by somebody who's giving it very specific parameters to do what they want. It's re representing that person's needs and then this is what we're going to be seeing online. This is what's going to be controlling the social media algorithms for absolutely everybody. This is going to be what is quite literally going to be all the content we're going to be consuming. Does that sound like a healthy future to you? Well, it's absolutely not. And if all of this is regulated and controlled by the government and tied to our digital IDs, that is most definitely a concerning future that I think none of you should want to have any part in. I know I sure as heck do not want that to be my future. That sounds like a complete dystopian nightmare. So the question is, what do we need to do? What is the solution? That's what we're finally going to get into. Whitney Webb starts this discussion. I'm going to provide some more context. Listen closely. This is really important. What has to be done is people have to divest from Silicon Valley and Wall Street as much as possible. Um, because basically what I call the blob that basically runs the U.S., it's the national security state. It's Silicon Valley and it's Wall Street. Okay. It's harder to divest from the U.S. government if you're living in the U.S. than it is to divest from big tech and Wall Street. You can take your money out of J.P. Morgan and Wells Fargo and Citi, and you can stop using Google products, Microsoft products. You can uh, not use OpenAI, maybe, which is basically Microsoft um, and all of this other stuff, um, because they plan to do a lot of bad stuff with your data, like a lot of very bad things. 
So there it is. That is the solution, right? It's to divest. It's to escape the systems that these individuals have built, right? The banks. Now, banks, no matter where you are in the world, they're part of this problem. Uh, the technology companies like Microsoft, like Google, like uh, like what you was, was mentioning, right? Not investing into them, not giving them liquidity, not using their services as much as is possible for you to still be able to get through your life. Those things are all extremely crucial. So this is what I've started doing is I've started taking all of my money out of all of these major banks. I've been looking at more local funded banks that I know are not involved in these types of issues and, of course, are very secure. Uh, that's my first step. Uh, my next step from... My, my thing is this, though, real quick. I understand that, you know, you should be watching out for your money. You shouldn't have a lot of money in these banks because you shouldn't be trusting these banks. But my thing is this, though. We know that the banks can shut down and you got 10, 20 grand in the bank, you ain't got it no more. <laughs> but my thing is this, though. Even if, let's just say, if you didn't have your money in the bank and the bank shut down, economy collapse, the dollar become worthless, then what? Would it even matter if you still had ten, fifteen thousand dollars under your mattress? You see what I'm saying? But at the same time, I still would rather take my chances of having it under the mattress than putting these banks. You know what I'm saying? Or at least invest it in something else. Real estate, stocks, whatever. Whatever you gonna do. Gold, silver, whatever you gonna do, you know what I'm saying? Or better yet, if you got enough room, if you got a big place or something, then just go ahead and, you know, if you got a barn, uh, uh, you know, you could build a barn, an extra barn or whatever. You got to, you know, just extra space. Then I'll, I will invest that money, at least about two, three grand of that money into like, you know, canned goods and, you know, dry foods and stuff like that. Because you can't eat dollars, but you can eat that rice. So at the end of the day, like if something was to take place. People are not really going to want no money anyway. People are going to want, you know, the things. Just like even now in this day of time, you really don't You really don't want money. You want to buy things. It's things that you want, but you know that you need the money to get it. So if something was to happen, basically you just cutting out the middleman. It's you. Instead of you, money, and the product, it'll just be you and the product. There is to get rid of all debt because I do not want to be part of this debt slavery system that they have. That is really crucial as well. Getting out of debt as soon as possible. And then furthermore, yeah, not investing in any of these technology companies.